Welcome to Swizzy Floristry. This is a demonstration video using fine wiring techniques for a posy bouquet. I've support wired some camellia leaves and what I'm doing is placing the leaf on top of each other so that the tips of the leaf are in an even line. At this particular point, we're not too concerned about the base of the leaf, but the tips of the leaf need to be aligned. What I'm then going to do is place another group of leaves that are flat against each other. So the two front surfaces of the leaf are together and the wires are straight down. I'm going to leave about two to three centimeters and then I'm going to parafilm the wires together, stretching and twisting the parafilm as I go to create all the wires into one. Then I'm going to open out the wires like the spokes of an umbrella. This is the reason that we place the leaves front to front. So when I unfurl them and bend the leaves down, all the camellia leaves are facing with the top side of the leaf up. It's also important to make sure that you bend the wires so that they don't cross over the wire previous to it and the spokes are free of any twists or bends. Once we've formed the size of the bouquet, what we're going to do is to angle the leaves. We need to bring the back leaves up at an angle and the front ones slightly down so that when the bridesmaid or bride holds the bouquet against her body, she can bring it right back into her body. This is about a 60 degree angle that we're looking for. So the angle is on the bouquet and the handle remains straight. What we're going to do now, we've folded out the the shape of the bouquet is to add a couple of more camellia leaves into the center of the bouquet. The way that I'm going to do this is to place the leaf down in between each spoke in the previous wheel that was created. Again, ensuring that if I put a wire into the right of the bouquet that I bend the leaf back to the right or if I place it in the left of the bouquet, I bend the leaf back to the left. We don't want the wires to cross over the center or to cross from one spoke to the other. This will ensure that we get an even distribution of materials within our wired bouquet. Once I've created a second ring of leaves that are slightly in from the first leaves that I bent out. Again, I can parafilm these wires together. Care needs to be taken to make sure that the junction point that you first started with does not rem go down lower. And we maintain that junction point at the same point that we first bind and bend out the leaves from. Continue to parafilm down ensuring that you don't twist the wires as you go down to create a nice, smooth, even handle. I'm now going to place the main flowers into the greenery base. So the way that I do this is to place the roses down in between the spokes of the wire. I can put several roses in at the same level to do this feeding each rose down in between the spokes of the wire that the camellia leaf are held by. Just ensuring again that I don't twist any of the wires or bring any of the wires across the center point of the junction of the bouquet. And remember that our flowers are wired so we can adjust them in minute detail if we need to once we go to fold these roses out. So once I have a group of roses that I've inserted before between 
the spokes of the camellia leaf. Again, paying careful attention to keep that junction point at the same height as it has been and not to let it travel down the handle. I can tape the rose wires on and then I can bend these roses out to go onto the camellia, the bottom row of camellia leaf to start to form the outside perimeter of the bouquet. Remember that we can adjust these roses around however we need to and these roses will rest on the bottom layer of camellia with the center layer of camellia still exposed in between the roses. Just even your spacing of your rows out so that you end up with a circular form that will start to build our posy bouquet. What I'm going to do now is to add a second layer of roses, much the same as I laid the second layer of camellia leaf. Again, I'm going to place these roses down in between the individual spokes of the bouquet, making sure that I don't pull the wires across from different sides of the bouquet. And these particular roses I'm going to put in a little tighter because I don't want these to sit out as far as the first row of roses. So I need to shorten these wires slightly so that when I bend them out, they will form a second ring of roses around the bouquet. Try and ensure when you put these flowers in that we use an uneven number of flowers, which will help with the circular pattern that we are trying to create in the bouquet. Again, when I've placed this second row of flowers in, I'm going to tape at that junction point and tape the wires down onto the handle, just taping down about five or so centimeters. And then I can gently bring those roses out into the outer circle to join with the first row. So we're building a shape with our placements. Then I can place some, the thing that I will do now is to add some of the Ming fern into the bouquet to give some body in between the rows of the roses. Again, I'm going to turn the bouquet as I do this, making sure that the wires go down in between the different spokes. And I'm pulling this Ming fern a little bit deeper into the bouquet. So it's also going to hide the mechanics from the side view. It's quite important in our wired, fine wired work that we hide the mechanics of the spokes of the wires inside from, the, from a side profile. So we can't see the wires down in the sides of the bouquet. We need to build this greenery up in these distinct layers so that the primary flower, the rose, is not obscured by the greenery. It's simply there to hide the mechanics of the fine wiring technique that we are applying. So after we've put the two levels of roses in, we then can put the Ming asparagus and then we'll also tape that into the handle of the bouquet, maintaining the junction point. So then we have the mechanics hidden. What we will do now is add some of the last roses to the bouquet. Remember, we want to create a domed shape effect. So these last roses are in the center of the bouquet and uh, to fill in the focal area. We normally choose a slightly larger rose for this area because this is our focal area of the bouquet, whereas we choose slightly smaller roses to go on the outside of the bouquet. Remember, we have wired all these flowers, so 
minute changes or manipulation of the flowers is very easy with wired work. What I'm doing now is just putting the last of the roses into the bouquet to make sure that I've got an even distribution of the flower shape and heads amongst the bouquets. I can adjust any of the roses profile or their depth within the bouquet. And once I'm happy with the actual depth of the roses, that's when I put the parafilm down onto the junction to hold everything firm for the next placement. Now what I need to do is to place some small miniature roses in between the large roses to both bring more color to the bouquet and also to blend the different sizes together. Sometimes what I can do, these roses are on a full length wire because it makes for very easy insertion in amongst the bouquet. And now that we've got a good base work of the spokes, these roses will slip down in between, the wires will slip in between the spokes below it and they will help hold together. When you're putting your bouquet together, it's always a good idea to move it around as I am so that you're looking at all the different profiles of the bouquet. Remember this will be held in a wedding ceremony or a formal occasion and people will look at the side profile as well as the front profile of the bouquet. So we need to move the bouquet around in our hands so we can see both these profiles when we're adjusting and placing the flowers within the bouquet. We can continue to put the spray roses which have been all individually wired so we can get a very even distribution of color throughout the bouquet. This is a formal style bouquet so we're looking for symmetry in both the flower distribution and the distribution of color, especially when we're using these pink, bright pink tones with the soft pink, we want to ensure that the bright pink is completely even throughout the bouquet. I'm just going to continue by turning the bouquet, looking at it from all the different angles and placing the flowers in. You'll notice as well that I'm making sure that I'm keeping the angle on the bouquet. So the bouquet is angled, but the stem remains straight. This helps for balance, physical balance within the bouquet for when the recipient is going to hold and carry this throughout the ceremony that they're attending. I'm just finishing off by placing a few more of the spray roses into the bouquet to make sure that the color distribution that I talked about is completely right and that all the roses are on the right profile. And by that I mean the right depth in the bouquet. We wire, we use fine wiring techniques in floristry to allow great precision in the placement of flowers for occasions like weddings and formal occasions. And that's why we wire the flowers because we can completely control their placement within the design that we're doing. So I'm just going around now, making sure that my pink, my hot pink is evenly distributed around the bouquet and towards the, the edges of the bouquet as well. Once I'm happy with the distribution of the spray roses, again, I'm going to bind the handle with parafilm to bring all the wires down in a straight fashion. Just make sure that you hold your wires straight and you don't twist them as you bring them down. Then just with a last little bit of the Ming asparagus, I'm going to pull that down into the bouquet just to hide any of those wire spokes that might be showing from any angle of the bouquet. 
This is the top part of our bouquet finished and we're now going to do the backing of the bouquet. I'm now going to back the bouquet off because it's very important not only we can't see the mechanics from the side or the front of the bouquet, but from the back of the bouquet where the holder, the bridesmaid or bride will view the bouquet. The, re the way that we do this is with some wi support wired ivy leaf. What I'm going to do is make sure that I bend up the ivy leaves and put them over the back of the bouquet, turning it gently as I do this because it is a wired item. So all the flowers are supported and wired and I'm bringing the leaves in a, a fringe around the back of the bouquet to make a very neat back or collar around the bouquet. So once I've done this treatment, then I can put my parafilm still at the same junction point. So I haven't moved down in the junction point at all. I can just very firmly put the tape, the parafilm tape up to hold these leaves in place. So I have a nicely backed bouquet with no mechanics showing from the back. I've made some figure eight bows and put them on a 22 wire and I'm going to place those up underneath the fringe or the collar of ivy leaf. And what this does, it gives another level to the finish of the bouquet and also gives a very soft part where the bride or bridesmaid can hold the bouquet so they're not actually feeling any of the wires, they're actually holding against the organza ribbon. So I've just put those up into the back of the bouquet to finish it off. So it's evenly around the bouquet, I've placed three ribbons. And now we're going to hand wire the ribbon the handle of the bouquet. I'm now going to ribbon the handle of the bouquet. We have all our wires that we've used from the flowers. What we need to do is to separate two wires out of the group of wires. A general rule of thumb for the length of the handle is around four fingers plus another two. So I'm going to cut the wires off just here. I am going to cut the wires straight across. And what I'm going to do is then, once I've cut the wires, I'm going to bring the leftover wires down and I'm going to parafilm right down over the end of where I've cut the wires to make sure that there's no sharps showing through. So I'm going to go generously over the end with the parafilm to ensure that there's no sharp wires left out the end. But I am leaving those two left wires down there and you'll s I'll show you the ribbon treatment. What I'm doing with the organza ribbon is I'm going to start at the top of the bouquet up underneath where the ribbons are and I'm going to loosely go down right over the exposed wires that we left. Then I'm going to take those wires back up and once I've taken them up, I'm going to cut them off. What this is going to ensure is that the ribbon cannot slip off the end of the bouquet. It's going to hold it firmly in place. Then I'm going to go up the handle in an anti-clockwise motion to tighten the ribbon right up to the top of the handle. I'm going to make sure that I push the ribbon up into the top, right up into the junction so that it's covering all the parafilm because the parafilm like the wires is a mechanics. Then I'm going to slip the ribbon 
around the handle and through itself to form a slip knot and then I'm going to pull that nice and tight, the slip knot nice and tight up into the binding of the handle, trim the ends off and there we have our finished handle where the ribbon cannot slip off the end. So the ribbon's firmly on the end of the bouquet. This is our fine wide technique posy bouquet. As you can see, it has a side profile of a half dome and the back is up at an angle so it can allow to go right into the body and rest against the bride or bride, bridesmaid's outfit to give the overall domed appearance.